You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> Who is Kamala Harris? She won't hold news conferences and rarely takes questions from reporters. Instead, she reads the same speech off teleprompter again and again. The path to the White House runs right through this state. Her campaign also releases carefully produced videos. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. That would be good, but would Harris's policies allow that? America's on track to bankruptcy. The vice president votes in the affirmative. Harris repeatedly casts tie-breaking votes to spend more of your money. Unlocking the ability to pass a COVID relief package without Republican votes. Last election, I ran a game show that compared candidates' spending plans. It found that Trump and Biden wanted to increase spending by more than $200 billion. Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders by trillions. But I was surprised that the biggest spending plans came from Kamala Harris. Her proposals would have exploded our debt. The highest inflation in 41 years. Biden's irresponsible spending ignited nasty inflation. Imagine what inflation would be like if Harris had been president. In her first policy speech, she's proposed almost $2 trillion in new spending. Provide first-time home buyers with $25,000. And $2 trillion small compared to what she wanted to do during COVID. Give every American $2,000 a month. That would have cost $21 trillion. She's also endorsed eliminating private health insurance, having Government take it all over. Even CNN anchors seem puzzled. So for people out there who like their insurance, well, they don't get to keep it? Well, listen, the idea is that everyone gets access to medical care. Now her campaign says she no longer supports entirely government-run health care. She's flip-flopped on other issues. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. No question, she told CNN. But now Harris wants votes in Pennsylvania where fracking provides jobs. Her campaign now says she won't ban fracking. And they even say Republicans claiming she wanted a fracking ban is false, an obvious attempt to distract. But what's false? That's what she said. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yeah. She also wanted to force gun owners to sell their guns to the government. I support a mandatory buyback program. Mandatory. But again, today... A Harris campaign spokesperson tells us that the vice president would no longer require this. So who is the real Kamala Harris? She used to brag about being a tough prosecutor against even the smallest offenses. I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. But then when progressives said abolish the police, she flip-flopped. And during the George Floyd riots when people were looting and setting fires, Harris tweeted, help post bail for those protesting. Now that the policing pendulum has swung back, she again brags about locking people up. I took on perpetrators of all kinds. During the 2019 Democratic debate, Tulsi Gabbard pointed out her hypocrisy. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. That was true. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. But and, I, and I inhaled. I didn't, I didn't inhale. <laughs> Another criticism of Harris is that she's nasty to people who work for her. Incredibly, there's been a 92% turnover on her staff. Political called her office abusive, an unhealthy environment. Now, if she were a hard-charging boss who got results, that might be okay. But we know what happened when Biden put her in charge of the border. More than 302,000 migrants crossed the southern border. Of course more people crossed. Harris promised them free stuff. Medicare for all to people in this country illegally. I'm opposed to any policy that would deny any human being public education or public health, period. Today, the legacy media want to protect Harris because they hate Trump so much. They were more honest when Harris ran against other Democrats. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. But yeah. Well, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. GovTrack's ranking of Harris was up on their site for five years. But once it looked like she would get the nomination, they deleted the page. When questioned about it, they said, votes from one legislative session are not sufficient to create a reliable portrait. What can be unburdened by what has been. Harris needs this media cover because she says weird things. What can be unburdened by what has been. And radical things. Yes, we do talk about equity. We actually believe it is a good principle. Equality and equal opportunity are good enough, she says. There's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place. So we need more government redistribution. Everybody should end up in the same place. Finally, Harris embraces the word woke. We have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. <laughs> What's so funny about woke? Cause a lot of us to be woke. <laughs> she is the favorite to be our new president? <laughs> and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. It's upsetting that this big government opportunist and this crass egomaniac are our choices. The good news is that America's founders wisely created checks on executive power. Foolish media often say, the president runs the country. Run the country. Run this country. The worst person possible is running the country. But the president runs just one of three branches of government, each of which was designed to be able to stop the other from doing something crazy. The founders demanded limited government because they'd seen the damage done by tyrants. With these two candidates, I'm grateful for those limits on executive power. I sure hope they stick.